you. Thanks very much. Can you hear me? OK, great. Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Peter Bohatchek. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Pivot Interactives. So uh, the problem that Pivot Interactives is solving is that science teaching is changing. Whereas it used to be enough for uh, science to be taught as a collection of facts and equations and problem-solving methods, new science teaching standards require that students know how to master the process of science. So now teachers are challenged with uh, the goal of having students learn to observe a situation or a scenario and develop a question that they think will help them understand it and then design and execute their own experiment and then use the results of that experiment to build their understanding. So if you've ever been in a classroom, you can imagine that having every student design and execute their own experiment is so impractical that it hardly ever happens in classrooms. So our solution is to create a series of online uh, exploration spaces where students can actually conduct authentic science investigation uh, using a web device. So I'd like to show you some of the tech building blocks that we use to do that. So first of all, uh, everything that we do is based on high resolution videos. There are no computer simulations. And we record these videos. We use high speed cameras or drones in multiple perspectives, uh, time lapse, slow motion. And so this particular one, and we build the apparatus as well in our lab. So this particular one shows uh, a laminar flow fountain. So it's a stream of water. It's recorded with a 1,000 frame per second camera. And so you can see there's this blade that cuts across the stream right there, right? So a question you might ask a student is, well, where is that water going to land? And it turns out the physics of that is just the same as if you tossed a ball. So what a student will need to know is how fast is that stream going? So they'll need a, a ruler. And they can put this ruler on there. And they can catch that stream as it comes out of there. And they can get a stopwatch and reset it. And now they can get a really precise measurement of that distance and that time. And let's see, they'll also need a protractor to measure the angle, right? And so now they can do that. Now they have enough uh, information that they can make their prediction of this real situation. So we built this video player and these interactive tools that you see. We made a collection of about 100 videos. We put them on a website in collaboration with Carleton College in, in Northfield. And we've had uh, about a million and a half uh, uses. And we get about 2,000 students per day during the school year using that. But that was a free model, and we really wanted to develop more capabilities than we could here. And so that's why we're doing Pivot Interactives, which, which is a subscription-based model. So for example, now we have the ability to embed this video player in a page where the teacher can create, or they can use instructions that we create. There's instructions here for the students. And here, the students can write, OK, here's how I made my, my prediction of where that would land. So did you ever notice that when you were in science class, right, that you'd get a word problem, and you'd figure this thing out, and you'd get to the end, and, and you know, maybe you got the answer right, but you never really knew, is that actually what would happen? Would it work out like that in real life if you really did it? And so what we do is we have, like in this case, the student can actually see this is exactly the same event recorded simultaneously, but from a different camera. So now the students can put a ruler on this, and they can find out, is the science that they're actually learning in there actually relevant, and does it describe the world around them? And again, they can put answers in here, say, yes, my prediction came out right or wrong. They can save it, uh, and the teacher can, can grade it. So that's great, but it still isn't an experiment, because this, the students can't change something and then see how that change affects the outcome. So let me show you one that is an experiment. So this one here, oh yeah. Also, you know how when you were uh, doing problems in school, they would say something like, a box slides down a frictionless plane, right? And you're thinking, where can I get one of these frictionless planes? <laughs> so we, we, we have one. We made one here. We constructed this. So this is a, uh, a superconducting puck, and it's levitated above that magnetic ramp. So the puck is cooled in a little tray of liquid nitrogen back there. So it really is nearly nearly frictionless. And we have some of these same measurement tools where they can measure like the height that it's released from. And they can put a little speed trap down here so they can find out how fast it goes. So now, what kind of questions could a student ask? Well, one would be something like, does the mass of that puck matter? Like, what if it weighed a different amount, had a different mass? How would that affect the speed at the bottom? So we added the ability down here. There's a control panel. And the students can see. So you can see here that I can change the mass. And I can actually select a different release height as well. 
And so I can go, and now it'll load this new scenario. It's, again, it's not simulated. It's a whole bunch of videos. In this case, 22, but in some cases, dozens or even hundreds of videos that we record. So the students truly get the chance to explore, the, to design their own path as they, as they explore. So we can, we can look at that one and see what the outcome is. But a more interesting question is about this release height. How, what's the pattern? What's the relationship between how high you release it from and how fast it's going at the bottom? Now, that's a science experiment that we'd really like our students to be able to do. But what they need to do that is a way to collect that data and graph it so they can find a mathematical pattern. So we built here just that, a data table that we wrote, and then we uh, pulled in this Plotly graphing library. So the two of those together now allow students to collect and analyze data. So I populated this already. When we make these, there are notes. So we're looking at the teacher view so the teacher can see what the solutions would be like. So here it is. Here's a data table that's populated. They can make calculated columns, and they can do regression. So they can really discover for themselves what is that mathematical pattern that's, that's buried under there. And uh, again, with these interactive instructions, they really can actually complete the entire cycle of an investigation from start to finish, right in this one page, upload it or su uh, submit it for, to the teacher who can then grade it. So we have right now, this, is, this website is, is live. So we have it so that uh, teachers right now can make free trial accounts, and they can go on here and modify these activities or look at them. Uh, we'll switch in about a month to a uh, subscription-based model where teachers will have to pay to have the ability to add students to their class to use it. And by that time, we'll have about 100 of these activities that you see here that will cover the whole physics curriculum. And then uh, in 2018, we'll start adding biology and chemistry. Uh, so a couple quick shout outs. I have to give a shout out to Jenna Pedersen, who's our lead developer, who was up on stage a little while ago. And she works, yeah, cheers for Jenna. Uh, and she also works with our, the rest of our development team. Uh, Isaac Cortez, Adrian Roque, uh, Jared Potter, and Shashi Lowe. And it's an incredible team. Without that team, this would be nowhere. Uh, and also, I have to give a shout out to Joe Dill. He's one of our, our recent graduates from my school, and he has done a lot of these videos. Every single video that you see here is done actually by students at our, at our school, and Joe has done quite a lot of them. So shout out to Joe as well. Uh, and thanks to all of you, and thanks to the Ministar team for putting this on. It's great fun to present here. So that's Pivot Interactives. These are online exploration spaces where students can learn how to do science inquiry. Thank you very much.